The Romans were never able to conquer Scotland. And when it came to Ireland or Hibernia, as it was known to them, they didn't even bother arse to try, um, which is probably fair enough. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you knew that there was a country out there full of Hibs fans, you probably wouldn't bother your arse either, would you? Do you know what I mean? They're inevitably going to defeat themselves. Do you know what I mean? You just leave them to it, but... A lot of people think that the, the reason why the Romans, uh, they were incapable or, or they were unable to uh, conquer Scotland is because of its wild, rugged and inaccessible terrain. Other people think it's because they were terrified of, of the Picts, who were the native people of Scotland at that time, or the Picti as they were known to the Romans, or the painted people. Now they called them that because the Picts, they would ride into battle bollock naked, covered in war paint and tattoos. Um, but I don't really... I don't really buy into that, do you know what I mean? Like, if the if the Romans were intimidated by full frontal nudity, fake tan and sleeve tattoos, then they would have never made it past Newcastle, do you know what I mean? They would have stopped there, wouldn't they? Now, I reckon the real reason why the Romans were never able to conquer Scotland is because the Romans tried to invade Scotland in the height of summertime wearing open-toed sandals and tunics. It was the bloody midges that kept the Romans out of this country, folks. I mean, like, like Hannibal, he marched his elephants over the Alps in order to defeat the Romans. It turned out all they needed to do was get some midges. Because I can tell you this, right, the Romans, they would have set up against the Picts. They've seen these bollock naked people across the battlefield from them standing there quite willing to get eaten alive by midges and they'd have gone, fuck this. They'd have hopped tail back over Hadrian's Wall because, I mean, even a Jordy looks civilised after you've clapped eyes on something like that, you know. And Pictland, um, it stretched from, from Fife all the way up to Orkney and it's true to say that the Romans, they were genuinely pretty scared of the Picts. It's amazing to think, isn't it? Like at one time, we were able to halt the most advanced, the most impressive empire the world has ever seen and now... Can't even beat Kazakhstan. Like, how the mighty have fallen, folks. Now, to the west of the Pictland, uh, you had the Scots. Now, the Scots, they were actually Irish settlers. Uh, and their kingdom, Dalriata, basically makes up where, where current-day Argyll and the Inner Hebrides are. And the Scots, they were early Christian settlers. And it was the Scots kings that allowed people like St. Columba, who's the guy that introduced Christianity to Scotland, uh, to set up monasteries uh, in places like the Isle of Iona, which became the kind of epicentre of the Celtic church. This is a spot where all of Scotland's ancient kings are buried and where they would be anointed as well. And the Scots, they loved setting up monasteries. That was their thing, right? There's this amazing story from 561 AD, right, where they, these two guys, St. Mulig and St. Moloch, right? Now, St. Moloch and, uh, and St. Mulig, they both want to, to set up uh, a monastery on the Isle of Lismore, north of Oban, right? And uh, they decide that what they're going to do is they're going to have an, a, a rowing race. And whoever touches the shore first, they will get to set up their monastery, right? Now, St. Millig, he realises that he's losing the race, right? So what he does is he chops off his own finger and throws it to the shore in order to win the race, right? Now, I don't know how that counts as a win, but fuck me, how good would it be to watch Steve Redgrave cut off his own finger and fucking throw it into the River Thames? Admittedly, still not as horrific as watching Paula Radcliffe squat in the middle of the street to take a shite, but it'd be pretty good. It would certainly make the Paralympics more interesting if we had people sawing off their own legs and throwing them across the finish line to try and win the 200 metres, you know? And uh, apparently, by the way, apparently, uh, this is amazing, apparently uh, in, in Irish mythology, there's a very similar thing in Northern Ireland where uh, the king of Ulster, he died with an heir, right? And so they did the same thing. They had a rowing race to decide who the next king of Ulster would be, right? An exact same story. Uh, this mad prick realises he's not going to win the race, so he chops off his own hand and throws it to the shore to try and win the race. And an incredible piece of foresight from that guy, isn't it? He must have known that in centuries to come, it'd be pretty commonplace to find body parts on the shores of Northern Ireland. You know, I think it really highlights the difference as well between Ireland and Scotland. The fact that the, the Scottish guy chopped off a finger, whereas the Irish guy just went for the whole hand. I don't, to be, at least he chopped off his left hand. That's a joke about masturbation, by the way, just in case you're wondering. Um, now they're not like the people in Northern Ireland. They uh, they get a hard time, you know. They got a bit of a reputation for being violent. Probably not. Probably not helped by the fact that they actually celebrate this act of self mutilation 
by having the red hand of Ulster actually on their flag. Do you know what I mean? Nothing says visit Northern Ireland quite like a fucking severed hand on your flag. It'd be amazing if like Dutch people just put an ear in the middle of their flag, wouldn't it? And they made things more complicated. Uh, to the southwest, in the southwest of Scotland, uh, you had uh, the kingdom of Strathclyde. Now, this was a Britonic Welsh speaking kingdom, um, which is presumably why Glaswegians still struggle with vowels to this day. And in Edinburgh and the Lothians, you had a Welsh speaking tribe called the Votadini. And uh, the actual oldest annal, the oldest written annal in Scottish history is the Gododin, right? And it tells the story of the Votadini. They were under pressure from the Northumbrian Angles to the south of them. And uh, basically the Gododin tells the story of how they were all feasting and drinking in Edinburgh Castle for five days solid before they got sufficiently drunk to then ride out into battle in the Battle of Cataric in 598 AD and got their arses handed to them by the Angles. It's a very similar approach that my Sunday League team used to have. Um, and essentially for the next 400 years Edinburgh fell into the hands of the Angles and became Anglified, right? So basically from the, the 7th to the 11th centuries what you had was you had the, the Pictish Scots in the north you had the Irish Scots in the west you had the Welsh in the southwest and you had the English in the southeast it's no wonder that the people of Scotland are notorious for fucking hating each other. Essentially, for a massive chunk of our history, we were living in what was essentially just a scaled-up version of an all-inclusive resort in Benidorm. 